All right, this part of the notes is going to be about Jefferson's second term. You need to know what everything that Jefferson's dealing with. He's dealing with Barbary pirates, Native Americans, and Britain, of course. The first deal that we need to talk about is how he gets to his second term. President Thomas Jefferson is going against the Federalist choice of Charles Pickney. And if you can see by this map, TJ wins in a landslide. He gets 92% of the states, the 162 electoral votes, and Pickney only gets 14 electoral votes. Only two states side with him. So Jefferson's in office and he already has to deal with the Tripoli pirates or the Barbary pirates. The pirates from Tripoli are going to raid merchant ships and force them into their harbor, take their goods, um, and basically all those merchants lose profit. One of the best examples of this was the Philadelphia warship where the naval captain has to burn down the ship to prevent the cap, um, pirates from actually using it. Uh, this was considered the most bold and heroic act of the age because he could have easily escaped on this ship, but he left men behind. So instead of leaving men behind, he burns it down to make sure the pirates don't use it. And he has to wait till the U.S. actually pays a ransom. U.S. pays that ransom of $60,000. The men are freed and the pirates agree to stop the raids. These are pictures of the Barbary pirates from Northern Africa. And this is another picture of the Philadelphia being burnt down. This is the location of Tripoli. As you can see, it's in northern Africa. Um, you can see that it's near the Mediterranean Sea, so they had control of those seas and basically forcing those merchants to give up their ships and profits. Neutrality conflict. We know that Britain and France don't like each other. These people are always at war. Problem is the U.S. is staying neutral, but they're trading with both sides. Neither one of those sides are going to like that. In 1805, we're going to see that there is a huge interference between Britain and France um, with the U.S. trade. They're going to set up blockades um, that are going to interfere with us. Britain is going to take it a step further and practice impressment. They're going to take our merchants and force them to fight in their navy. Jefferson is going to place a trade embargo. He's going to stop trade with all foreign countries. His plan is to hurt Britain. Problem is, is it backfires and it hurts the U.S. economy. If we're not trading with anyone, we're not making money with anyone. All right, so our biggest money go-to was Britain and those foreign countries. Now that we're not trading with them, we start to see that our economy is going down. This is a picture of impressment. You can see on the very far right, the man with the gun is a British soldier forcing these American merchants onto the boat, and now they're going to be forced in the British Navy. The Leopold versus the Chesapeake is another example of British um, taking our ships and trying to search and seize them. The Leopold, which is a British ship, is going to attack the Chesapeake because the Chesapeake doesn't want to allow the British ship to search and seize them. So three men are killed, 18 are wounded. Jefferson is influenced by the American people to go to war, except he doesn't want to because he does not believe that we have the money to do so. The reason why we don't have money is because he took that money from the War Department and actually put it towards national debt. That means our army is smaller and we can't do anything against anyone who attacks us. Jefferson has a really hard second term, all right? He messed up with the trade embargo. He agrees to repeal it. He knows it doesn't work. He's going to follow the example of Washington and leave after two terms. He even calls his second term a splendid misery because literally the whole time he's dealing with problem after problem after problem. The person that he is going to recommend for the second or to become president after him is going to be his secretary of state, James Madison, the same guy who wrote the U.S. Constitution. James Madison is going to run against Charles Pinckney and he's going to win pretty easily. Some real quick notes on President Madison. What you need to know he starts his presidency in conflict. He's already dealing with all these foreign affair problems that we've talked about before. He decides that he is going to trade with one country, and the person he's going to trade with is Napoleon of France. Napoleon promises to stop searching and seizing, and we say, you know what, you're a good partner, let's work with you. Problem is, is that France is going to lie to us. They're going to continue searching and seizing our ships, but we don't choose them as our enemy. We still focus on Britain. We still think that they're the main people. Um, so Madison decides that Britain is the main force that we need to go against, not France. 
we know that a second war with Britain is inevitable. Other problems that Madison is going to be dealing with is Native Americans. The Native Americans are upset that settlers are moving into Ohio and they're living on that land. Native Americans are given territory in Ohio. Some of that is theirs. And because Americans are moving in there, they're extremely upset. One of the biggest names is going to be Tecumseh and his brother, the prophet. They're going to unite all of these Native Americans and they're all going to work together and team up with the uh, Britain and they're going to try to fight the United States. In 1811, we're going to have Harrison, who is going to actually go to war with the Prophet, and he's actually going to be defeated. Native Americans are going to flee to British aid in Canada, so we know now that Britain is aligning themselves with the Native Americans to fight against the United States. Knowing this, we must go. All right, We must go to war with Britain. That's why the title is Britain Must Go. Because we have war hawks who are telling Madison there are plenty of reasons why we should be going to war with Britain. They're teaming up with Native Americans. They're practicing impressment. There's no other choice but to go to war with them. Two of the biggest names are Henry Clay and John C. Calhoun. These are the big war hawks, all right, Republican representatives who want us to go to war. In 1812, Madison is going to declare war with Britain, and officially the War of 1812 starts.